What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays, where we come together to help you make your story matter and make your author dreams come true. Today we are continuing our story beat breakdown series of the three act story structure. So if you're new around here, we've been doing a series breaking down each plot point in depth of the three act story structure and looking at the underlying psychology behind why this story structure works so well. So if you missed all the previous videos in this series, please give them a watch. They are all organized in this convenient little playlist. It's really important that you nail act one or else you won't pull readers through to act two. Make sense? Yeah. So get caught up and if you've been following along, Let's pick up right where we left off, the post midpoint action hero. That's what today's video is all about. Plus, we're also gonna cover the second pinch point. Basically, this is a video covering the second half of act two, okay? Let's get started. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. Okay, you know the drill. The three act story structure template is in the description box below. Grab it, print it, follow along, and let's start by reading the description for the post midpoint action hero. Protagonist approaches their goal from a different angle. Figure out how your protagonist is going to handle the plot twist. It's sort of like another inciting incident, shoving them further outside their comfort zone and presenting a new and unexpected challenge. Give your protagonist a plan going forward and a sense of where this is going. Your readers want to know what happens next because they can foresee what might happen. Prompt, ask yourself, what is my protagonist's new plan going to be based on the game-changing midpoint and what it means to them? How does my protagonist think their new plan is going to actually work and bring them to their goal while still avoiding their fear? Okay, so I really want to underscore what I said there about the inciting incident because that's really what the game-changing midpoint is to the second act. It's the catalyst that affects your protagonist's goal and changes the game obviously. As we discussed in the plot twist and the plot twist case study video, a great plot twist is more than just a radical change in the expected direction of the plot. It changes the game for your characters and most importantly, your protagonist, which then impacts the plot in a meaningful way because it impacts the protagonist's goal. The post midpoint action hero is basically the response to this. Given their internal and external journey thus far, how is your protagonist going to respond to the plot twist? That's the real question here. It's cause and effect, okay? Just like with the inciting incident, the game-changing midpoint pushes your protagonist further outside their comfort zone and forces them to make another impossible choice. And just a hint, this choice that they're gonna make, it's just gonna get them in deeper trouble. <laughs> it has to because we're leading up to a disaster plot point, okay? Things haven't even started to get bad yet. <laughs> However, your protagonist is probably totally unaware of the trouble that they're getting themselves into. They're making every decision based on their misbelief, which you know is going to send them into dangerous territory, but they don't know that. In fact, they think they are making a great decision. <laughs> Remember that juicy neurological cycle of question, curiosity, answer, reward, dopamine, question, curiosity, rinse, repeat? That's a cycle that you want to give your reader throughout your whole story, okay? The plot has to be punching your protagonist, yes, but the protagonist has to counter with their own decisions, okay? They can't just stand there and absorb all the external conflict like a punching bag. That's a recipe for a forgettable two-dimensional character. Now, if you're like, punching bag, two-dimensional character, what, what, wait, what, what are you talking about? You're gonna wanna check out this video where I explain the difference between plot-driven stories and character-driven stories. But if you've been following along with this series and building your character's internal conflict all along, you know exactly what to do here. Let your character's fear and misbelief rule their life. Let that steer the ship. Let that determine how they respond 
to the game-changing midpoint. Just like with the inciting incident, the game-changing midpoint presents an impossible choice. Only now, your protagonist has more to lose because they've been going on this journey. They've been going after the thing that they think will make them happy while avoiding their fear. They still face the choice of pain versus pain, but it's a little more complicated now because of all of the external events that have happened. Your protagonist has the opportunity here to come to terms with their internal conflict and get out of this mess by simply realizing the truth but it's not that simple. <laughs> in fact, it's going to take a disaster in order for them to realize the truth. So for now, they move forward with their new plan based on their misbelief. It might seem like a good plan to them. It might even seem like a good plan to the reader, but little do they know, <laughs> little does anyone know, it's gonna backfire on them. It's not time for the disaster quite yet, so don't get too excited. For now, what we're gonna do at the end of act two is just allude to the coming disaster with, of course, the second pinch point. Opposition or antagonistic force gets closer. Remember, your opposition doesn't have to be an actual villain or even a person. It can be the protagonist's misbelief, always looming in the background, getting ready to attack them come act three. Whatever the major opposition your protagonist is going to face off with at the climax of your story, that's what you want to give the reader a taste of in this story beat. Prompt, ask yourself, how can I show the opposition or antagonistic force now getting closer to disrupting the protagonist's life? For more in-depth explanation on what a pinch point is, check out this video I made on the first pinch point because all the same rules apply. The only difference between the first pinch point and the second pinch point is that in the second pinch point, the antagonistic force or opposition has gained considerable ground since act one. That means the disaster is getting closer to disrupting your protagonist's plan and their entire life. You can use vicarious suspense or shared suspense here. It really depends on your writing style and what the pinch point is and just your personal preference. I've written second pinch points where we jump over to the villain's point of view and see what they're plotting against the protagonist. And I've also written second pinch points where we're in the protagonist's point of view and they just see a really subtle clue go by that, that is connected to the disaster, but they don't think anything of it. And the reader doesn't think anything of it either until disaster strikes. <laughs> so there's pretty much no one-size-fits-all method for writing pinch points, in my opinion. You have total creative freedom to make it as revealing or as cryptic as you want. Just make sure it matters and you're good to go. Okay, let's recap the principles we just learned about writing the second half of act two. After your plot twist changes the game for your protagonist, they have another impossible choice to make. The protagonist must shift their plans to adapt to the new challenges that your plot twist has presented. Remember, the curiosity of the impossible choice is what triggers dopamine in the reader's brain and keeps them reading. The choice your protagonist makes will only lead them to a disaster, but they don't know that. In fact, they think this is a very good decision. After all, it's a way to continue pursuing their misbelief-based goal while still avoiding their fear. All the second pinch point must do is show the opposition getting closer to disrupting the protagonist's plan and entire life. You can use vicarious suspense or shared suspense here. Choose what suits your story best and find a creative way to show your antagonist or opposition closing in. Ask yourself, what is my protagonist's new plan going to be based on the game-changing midpoint and what it means to them? How does my protagonist think their new plan is going to actually work and bring them to their goal while still avoiding their fear? How can I show the opposition or antagonistic force now getting closer to disrupting the protagonist's life? Okay, boom, that's it for this story beat. Next time, we're going to explore one of my favorite plot points, which is the supposed victory and the disaster. <laughs> this is the moment we've all been waiting for. The moment where we completely and utterly destroy our characters <laughs> and make our readers cry, of course. That's always a good thing. We're also gonna case study some story examples in that video so that I can show you what a disaster plot point looks like in a variety of genres. So stay tuned for that video, it's gonna be awesome, and if you're from the future, 
the link will be right there. You'll also find the links to all the previous videos in this series in the description box below this video, plus the three act story structure template. Make sure you grab that. If you have any trouble grabbing it, downloading it, that probably means you're already on my email list and I sent it directly to your inbox. So check your inbox first. And if you still have trouble downloading it, just let me know, comment below, and I'll make sure you get it. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Also be sure to check out my Patreon because that's where we go beyond videos and take storytelling to the next level. The Patreon community is not only the best way to support what I'm doing here on YouTube, but it's also the only way to connect one-on-one -on -one with me and get my advice and guidance on your story. So go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons and check out all the awesome exclusive bonus content I have over there for you. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Oh, 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 oh,